Welcome to Crappie Hippies at the Bench, an instructional video series on how to tie your own jigs, flies, and create your own fish catching baits. Brought to you by Glasswater Angling for a Better Outdoors, makers of lead free fishing tackle, inventors of Angle King, the Crappie Dooler, and home to hand tied jester jigs, Ring King Paddle Tail Grubs, lead free jig heads, and more. Check us out at glasswaterangling.com and now here's crappie hippie at the bench four hi everybody and welcome to crappie hippie at the bench this show today is going to be on making mop jigs now mop jigs are a super fun jig to make they're taken from a mop jig or mop fly pattern, a pattern called a mop fly that fly fishers have been using. Uh, alternative materials are getting huge in fly tying and jig tying. The old, um, oh, it must be a barred feather off a partridge from the top of, you know, a mountain is, thank goodness, going away. And we know we can make perfectly good catching, fish catching flies and lures out of all kinds of things that we can find. Uh, and so mop jigs are one of these things. Uh, we're going to just take a microfiber nubbin off a mop and we're going to turn it into a very effective fish catching lure. Anyway, I'm going to talk about where to get mops and all that kind of stuff at the end of the video. There'll be a segment back there for that. Um, so let's not get bogged down with too much. Let's just get going. Um, I've already done one mop jig video uh, on doing the carp baby, which is a crappie style mop jig. But for those of you that haven't seen that, uh, let's just go ahead and do a quick review how to do a regular, what I call crappie style. This differs, um, the original mop fly, the mop is just tied up in here and, and the fly has kind of a scissor, kind of a lever action as it moves through the water. Very, very effective for trout. But crappie fishers got hold of it and said, you know, we when we tie, we like that head, body, tail. We like our three colors, or at least our three opportunities for color. Okay, so I put down kind of like a what I call a double bed. I went up and back, up and back, okay? So now our tag end is way under there. And, okay, so now the tag end is way under there and uh, we're, we're good to go. And we've got a nice no skid surface. So what I wanna do with this one, I think I'm gonna use a green mop. And here is a microfiber wash mitt that my beautiful wife, bought for me at Dollar Tree for the price of one dollar. And so I'm gonna take a, a nubbin off of here, okay? And I, I've already, you know, done two, three dozen flies and look, and, and jigs, and look at all that I've got left. Um, these aren't, these cheap dollar ones are not as durable as some of the nicer ones, but you know what, they're durable enough. Now, the more you leave sticking off the back, these are kind of a static tail anyway. They don't have just a lot of crazy action to them. And that's, you know, sometimes a good thing. We all fish with a lot of plastics, a lot of materials that don't have tons of action, bucktail or a, a beaver tail or a cricket tail type plastic. Uh, you know, we have things that, that just give more of a quiver or more, more of a static action. Uh, mops fall into that, that category. So now if you tie it up really tight like this, you know, you're going to have just a little bit, you know, the usual rules. You don't want to have a tail that's, you know, you want your tail to be no longer than the overall body of your jig, you know, preferably down to about the bend. So for this one, I'm going to have the tail stick out about that far. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make one, two, three loops and pull straight down tight because you're going to feel what this is going to want to do is roll on you, roll on you, roll on you, roll on you, okay? This is a nice, thick material, and once you get it on there, baby, it's going to stay. It's not going to want to pull out of here. You know, if you catch enough fish, um, you know, this is still going to last you 10, 20 fish, probably more. I've really only had two of these mop nubbins off these cheapies fail me, and I haven't had any off the more expensive fail me yet, but probably haven't caught enough fish on them to be making uh, an authoritarian, uh, authority-style uh, pronouncement on that. But anyhow, get that on there 
and uh, you, you're holding it at first, you pinch it down, two or three loose wraps, pull straight down to secure it, then secure the heck out of it, tugging, 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 always tugging, and then, you know, we just come back in here, and now, very simply, uh, you know me, I like a fat body, so you can either tie here and just go forward, or if you're like me, and on this is a, a 16th ounce lead-free bismuth alloy jig head uh, with a number four hook, and on a 16th and eighth ounce jigs, I like to go up and back. I like, especially with the mop on there, because I like scale, and I want to make sure that that, that body is not smaller than the tail. I, I just, you know, that, that's my aesthetic, and that's what I want to see. And so, you know, now you watch, I'm holding down on this, I'm pulling down on this, pulling down on this. See that jig moving. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take as many wraps as I need. Okay, and then once I get it built up to the level of that body, just overlapping wraps. And I'm going to go ahead, I'll double them up all the way down here if I need to. And I see, I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull, okay. And I'm going to get down here. And there, and that, and that is a beautiful thing. And there you have, okay, I'm going to trap all that like that, okay. And there you have it, a gorgeous, especially this time of year, I like a little blue in a pattern for crappie. I never used to use blue much, but the guys that take me out in the cold weather, they're like, you better get some blue. So I have blue now. You better believe it. I don't like. I don't like getting outfished. I don't like getting outfished. And if you, you they give you good advice and you don't take it, then you you kind of getting what you got coming. So we're gonna we're gonna put another put my double double knot on there. I'm gonna pull it down. Boom! Break it off. And there you go. All right. So that's your mop jig tie, tied crappie style. And that'll go out and catch your crappies, your white bass, everything you want to catch. All right. So there we go. All righty, jig number two. All right, now we're gonna do one that I call mop jig tied, quote unquote, trout style. And trout fisher style means we're just gonna take, and we're gonna tie this as long as possible. And, We definitely want to cover the hookup real well with this, okay? And I'm going to do it, you know, double down again on the bed thread, okay? So I got a nice shiny black body there, black covering on my hook, because all I'm basically going to do now is take one, two, three nice and see how that see how bad that wants to roll I just wanted to show you and now I'm gonna to have to take it off here you know okay so I'm gonna get that in position one two three I'm holding it in place and now I got to come I want to come straight down with my tension and now I've got it centered nice I'm done I'm done I put it in I put it in Okay, that's it. That is an effective lure. Oh, I want this, I want that, I want flash, I want something, I, you know. You know, why don't you hang a spinner on it, crappie hippie? It's like, yeah, there's always a temptation. Believe you me, there's always a temptation. But utter and sheer simplicity is one of the most beautiful things in fishing. This little bug right here in the road rash red color with the black accents, all right, is going to catch a ton of fish. All right, and it's gonna, you know, um, now what I'm gonna do with that shiny wrap like that is I'm gonna leave this little piece of thread on here and then I'm gonna I'm going to drench that in glue so it's nice and shiny and then when this is dry 
I'm going to uh, snip that piece of string off of there. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to have some tank test video here. I, I don't do a big deep dive. I want you all just to see the bug, see how to make the bug, and then we can do whatever nerd out you want to do. We'll all do it together. We'll go get in the test tank. We'll have a look at how some of these swim if you want to get that far into it. Uh, I'm happy to take you there. So, But anyway, ignore this annoying piece of thread on here. And you can see, it's going to ride it back, and it's going to have, this is going to wiggle quite a bit. Now, some people, including fly fishers, are afraid, oh, your fish is going to just ping on that tail and, and miss hooking up the whole thing. But the vast majority of the fish come in toward the head, end up getting the whole thing anyway. You're just going to have to decide if you're, you know, they're short striking and they're pinging just the tail and you're missing a lot of fish, then quit using it. But you know, it's crazy if it's the only thing that's going to draw strikes and yet you can't um, close the deal. Other guys are just like, hey, I never have any trouble. So now, of course, it, you know, on a fly, it's different because the fly, you know, on the fly, the, the hook tie is up here. And so the hook point on most flies rides down while, the, while the, the tail, you know, is up here. But the thing of it is, whether it's riding this way or this way, is this crazy lever action, this scissor action, lever action here. Uh, fish love it, and it really works really, really well. Looks like a bug or a worm or something that's having a really bad day and ended up in the lake, and oh my, my, you know, everything's going downhill from there. Okay, that's how to tie the trout style. Mop jig. Here we go with hackle hacks. All right, let's do some hackle hacks. What do you mean by hackle hacks? Well, we're going to take and we're going to make some jigs like these that have our mop jigs but have this one poor guy's been on my bench he needs to get in the tackle box he's all covered with dust um but that have some extra little touches on them to make them more appealing and so on and um here's one with a with a double that i'm not going to tie in this video because I haven't tank tested it or field tested it yet, but put some hackle feelers on there. Um, we're going to. Here's one that I did uh, on the crazy, where I've got the I've got the tail pointing up. I don't know if it's going to foul on that hook like that or not, but uh, we're going to put some hackle on there. So let's show you some quick hackle hacks to uh, fix up your. Um, mop jigs okay now we're going to take this guy right here this nice 16 ounce bismuth alloy lead free bismuth alloy head and we're going to go ahead and tie a conventional mop jig with it all right i got this this nice double-sided mop off uh amazon for i think it was 250 so a little more, but once again, an absolute mountain of um, material. All right, so throw that in there. I'll kind of hurry through this part. Okay, so we're going to, once again, I'm going to look. I want about that much. I'm going to come down loose and tight. Making sure it's centered right on top. There we go. Looking good. And now we do two things. Now we're going to tie in our chenille. Okay, and I'm using this beautiful pink frosty New Age chenille, which I just love New Age chenille. And it's just it just catches me as a tire and a fisher. Although I, I think there's times in this little sparkle, you know, there's times I won't won't use new age chenille because I want a more basic look in a jig. But my golly, you know, crappie, they're they're uh, they like things that sparkle and twinkle. Bless their little hearts. All right, and now I'm going to um, also tie in a hackle. And here I've got this nice. This is what's called a neck hackle. And this is, uh, I got this from Nimrods. Unfortunately, he doesn't have this product anymore, but you can get 
uh, strong neck hackle, and these are the three to five or three to four inch, which are generally cheaper. And for tying jigs, this is what you want. And you'll get a nice. Uh, now most guys are going to sell you a piece about half this big, so you get about that much there. Uh, Nimrod was getting this at a really good price and passing that along to us customers, and uh, unfortunately, uh, his source dried up on him. And we're all heartbroken because it was a good deal. But anyway, three to four inch. Uh, this says Chinese saddle hackle. Sometimes they're called neck hackle. Um, you can also get neck hackle. Um, but the saddle hackles, like this, the short saddle hackles of a smaller bird. All right, saddle hackles come off. Imagine if you're going to ride a chicken, okay? And if, where you would put the saddle would be back where its legs are at and uh, sit on top of those legs. Um and uh, that's why it's called saddle hackle. And it can come in the short. And in a minute, we'll take a look at the at the long uh, that comes off the roosters and the bigger chickens. But uh, so anyway, so we got this beautiful hackle. We're going to use about this much of it. So we're going to we're going to come down here, and and you can even save that little piece. Uh, those are good. You can do make what are called V's and and turn them into jigs. Um, now I'm just you just gently comb it out like this. Now it doesn't matter. You can tie in the the base and have it get smaller as it goes to the front. But I like to tie in the tip on this particular pattern and have it get bigger toward the front. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tie it right in behind this and behind this chenille and give the chenille a chance to overrun it too. Okay, and loose, and then I'm going to get it in there tight. Now. This is the way, you know, fly tires, oh, you jig tires, you know, your stuff's so easy. It is, by comparison, because when you tie flies, you're always up to a whole bunch of impossible, crazy stuff. And uh, you've got to plan a little more, okay? And we're going to plan this. So, you know, instead of just being able to wrap this real quick, you know, I've got to go around this hackle. And it takes patience. That hackle's in my way! Well... It, it's okay. It's fine. And what you need, if you really want it out of your way, and of course I don't have them up and ready like I ought to. Here they are. If you really want, you know, you can take your, your hackle pliers and you need, if you're going to do a lot with hackles, you can do it with your fingers, but these things cost like a dollar or two, okay? Some places will even just give them to you if you buy enough stuff. And uh, they're, they're little pliers, little just a big old spring, and we just can attach that spring on there. Now i got all this stuff swinging around down there. Kind of like having out multiple catfish lines. We don't want things to get tangled, but we don't want to. We got to fish it. We got to fish it the way we do, right? We got to fish it the way we do. Okay, so now I get that in there. Okay, and now I got to come back. Come here. There we go. Now I'm going to catch that, that chenille, and I'm just going to catch it with a couple of turns here. Okay, and then. We're going to get this out of the way, thank goodness. And there goes the chenille. Yay, now the chenille's out of our way. Get that one out of the way, right? And now, the fun part, I'm going to line up that, that vein, that, that quill in there, okay? So that it... Wah! <laughs> okay, let's try that again. It's all twisted now. Okay, well, you don't want it to be twisted, okay? So, you know, I'm going to line up that, that quill as best I can, okay? And I'm going to go around, and I'm, I'm tugging on this. Not like, not like I tug on 210 denier thread. No, not like that. But I'm tugging on it. I'm tugging on it. I'm tugging on it, okay? And now... I get that feather on there. I want to make sure and catch it on the one side, catch it on the other side, catch it again. And now I got him. And now I can let go with these. Okay. And now look, see, now he's got his little collar on. And I'm just going to come in here and put the whipster on it, cinch that down. And now what I want to do is I want to find that, that little end. And, you know, when you're going to start using feathers and doing some of these fly techniques on your jigs, you're going to want to get some finer scissors. 
the kind I recommend in my $60 kit, I still use. I still use these dollar twenty-five scissors from Walmart, whatever cheap. These Westcott, nice and sharp, you know, but they're a little big for this kind of work. Now that's a good knot. I got it in there. If I wanted to put in, you know, I can put glue. I can do whatever I want uh, at this point. But I'm going to trust my good old three-part finish and just come in here. Boom! All right, I can't wait to swim one of these around so you all can see. Now we get that nice collar on there uh, for trout through the ice. I got guys that cannot buy enough of these jigs. They 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 love them. They love them, and they, and they work great. And um, and they, they seem to think the collar on there is is indispensable. So who knows, right? Alrighty. So you're thinking to yourself, and you're thinking rightly. What about the trout tie? Why can't I just you know grab that and uh, where did I put that boy? There he is. Okay. So let's say, you now this is, I just got done with a big wrap on how this is, and we're going to take our good scissors, and we're going to get rid of this annoying piece of thread. There it goes. There it goes. Now, little crappie hippie, yeah, yeah, you're right. Could you put a collar on this to make it look more buggy? Of course you could. Of course you could. In fact, you can go to the lake and be like, oh, the ones with the collars were catching all the fish. You know, I want to put a collar on this after the fact. It's like, go right ahead. It's your bug. And there's nothing to stop you because it doesn't take but two or three turns of the thread. So let's say I got home with this jig and it did okay, but my buddy Kim Burnett was down the bank with a collar with, with a hackle one doing twice as good. I'm like, oh, man. Well, I can fix this. I can do that. Now, what I'm going to use for this... Okay, now I made a mistake. I call these neck out. These are short saddles, short saddle hackle, strong saddle. That was the cerise. These are neck hackles. These come off. You have what's called a cape back here, and then you have neck feathers too. And the, on the hens, the neck feathers and the capes have a lot softer uh, feathers. Anyway, Nimrods gives you a great deal. Half ounce, loose neck hackle. Um, it absorbs water faster. It's more of a, a wet fly type deal. And the way you can tell that is by the webbing in it. But like I say, I'm not going to talk hackle right now. We're going to talk different kinds of hackle here uh, in another segment or at the end of this video. Uh, but it's the same thing. But you can see how when I comb this out, it's a lot of them are st you know sticking together and stuff. And that's okay. It's perfectly cool. And you're like, well, can I do anything with this fuzzy part down here? Yeah, you can. You can make dubbing out of it. You can do this, you can do that, or you can just throw it away. It just depends. And, you know, what I do is I fill up bags full of scraps, and then if I get tired of it and I don't know what to do with it or I'm like, oh, these scraps, I'll never go through all these scraps, then I find one of my nieces, nephews, somebody will take a big bag of feathers and some glue and treat their uncle, their cousin, their daddy to some seriously awesome art with that bag of feathers. So never worry about saving scraps if that's where you're at and never worry about throwing them away or giving them away if that's where you're at they're, they're natural as heck they don't hurt nothing and we're in good shape okay so once again i tie that in by the tip all right and you can you know you can you know some people really worry about which way it's facing and shiny side out and shiny side in i don't think it matters so much on a jig like this but you can work through that i got this one you know shiny side facing the back um but these are not, you know, that much more shiny anyway. And you notice, you know, you want to leave just a little room up here. Okay. Isn't that the funnest thing ever, though? It's the great thing about working with hackle is that, you know, you got this flat feather. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're doing this. And you're making it stand up and look like a bug. And, and, it, and it's just... One of those little bits of knowledge that's so freaking awesome, at least to me. I can't get enough of this kind of stuff. I love watching. I love watching a jig come to life or a fly come to life on the vise. Okay, so now that I can kind of see right where I want to be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wiggle in here. I'm going to snip that off tight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lick my finger a little bit. I'm going to sweep these back. 
you see that big hackle end sticking up there I want to trap that down I want to make sure that thing doesn't get loose and I want all these stray hackles either I've got to either sweep them back and get them to be part of the program or cut them off okay and so now you just put one two three and then I'm gonna just for fun I'm gonna put one of these down here. Whoops. One, two, three, and over, and pull it down, and cinch it tight. Okay, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it long. And the reason I cut it long is so if it doesn't just rebound back in there. And then, you know, and this is the thing about Stanley Hansen. You can see how I disturbed that old varnish and it went cloudy on me and that's why ladies don't like you to bang their nails and stuff because it screws it shatters the finish on them but for now it, it's nice and shiny and it'll stay nice and shiny as long as they don't abuse it too bad and fish abuses it that's fine but so now we've got that one so that's the one that's gonna have the more action and all that but we've we've gone ahead and buggied it up bugged it up and you can come in here if you want cut this top off you know, and have them just sticking up like it's a dead bug with the legs sticking up. But remember, you're upside down here. So if you just want legs, then you would cut cut this off, you know. You can play around with it that way uh, if you feel like it. And I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm going to just leave it on there because I can always take scissors with me when I go out to the fishing uh, with me. Always, always take scissors. Not just a cut line and so forth, but to cut band-aids <laughs> and to modify lures and to do other things. Okay, now, somebody asked me, well, what about a bugger jig? Okay, I think we ought to just stop right there. We're already over 26 minutes, and that's enough learning for any single video. I promise I will get to how to tie the bugger-style mop jig in another video that I'll release right away because most of the video has already been shot. But for now, thank you for watching.